Hello, and welcome to The Quantizer. So I've recently gotten back into FPGA design, and it's been a while, so there's been a lot of things that I've forgotten about. And this video is going to go over kind of like uh, the things that I wish that I had in a video to spin me up quickly on the important things to know about when, when starting a, an FPGA project. So uh, the things we're going to cover in this video is a top-level module and uh, how to write one and how to connect in the actual um, wires from the board in there through these uh, constraints files and then how to write a test bench for that module so that you can then uh, validate the design and look at the uh, simulated output to see if that it's working as expected and then to actually use the built-in logic analyzer of the chip to then uh, view the the logic on on the board so that you can then um, see that it's working here and uh, if that interests you then uh, and, uh, and stick around. Before we jump in, if this type of information is interesting to you, then be sure to like and subscribe so that you can be alerted as to when our new content comes out and visit us at www.thequantizer.com where we have a lot of tutorials and reviews and projects you can look into, as well as different types of tools that may be useful for you in the different projects you're building. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the top level module. And uh, you can see we've named it top and it has uh, three parameters. So it has two inputs and an output of uh, sys clocks and buttons and uh, some LEDs. How the top level module is aware of uh, these things or how it gets wired into it is through this constraints file. And you can see in this constraints file, we have uh, uncommented the sys clock section, the LEDs and uh, the buttons right here. And that's how this top level module gets that stuff wired in. The next thing we're gonna do is um, talk about how this uh, system actually works, like what it's doing. Uh, and what it is, is every time we press a button, we are going to count up a register. And once um, you know, we're gonna take the values of that count and display them on LEDs. And so it's kind of like a binary representation of our uh, of this count, which is right here. And um, in order to, to do that, we're gonna have to read from a button. And since a button is an asynchronous signal, meaning I can press it kind of whenever, um, it's not in our clock you know, domain of the FPGA, we have to we have to take in that into account that there could be issues of metastability, meaning, you know, I could have the setup at hold times being violated on my on my clocking, and I can't, you know, I don't know if it's going to be a one or a zero, and so I need to account for that. And so the way I account for that is to uh, use some synchronization registers, which is what I'm doing right here. And so that'll help us handle that metastability, and then we're going to need to count up a counter um, to deal with um, bouncing. So, you know, these are mechanical buttons. And so when you do that, they can actually kind of like chatter a little bit uh, up and down and, uh, and that can, you know, mess up our, uh, our reading and count too fast. We don't want to do that. So we're going to, we're going to have a counter that will just kind of like hold until it's been, you know, kind of it's held for a certain amount of time. And then it's going to register. Yeah. Okay. You're not, you're not bouncing anymore. This is actually a, a button count. So, so that's what we're going to do. So um, when uh, we're going to talk about these variables here real quick, or these registers rather. So this, this button down right here is what we're going to pulse when, after we're going to, after it gets through our synchronization and um, debouncing that lets us know, yes, we're going to pulse this up saying, yes, this is a valid button thing. Go ahead and count or increment the counter on the register. And this uh, single quote zero means set all of this, all the bits in this to zero. And then this is that, that synchronization thing. Um, the synchronization registers here, uh, we have three of them. And uh, we've added this async reg equals true. And what that does is it tells Movado that these registers are being used uh, to synchronize an asynchronous signal. So kind of keep them close together to help out with the metastability deal. Uh, the smart debug equals true. Um, you know, I read about that when I was looking at the uh, internal uh, logic analyzer, which we'll show later. Um, I, don't, I don't actually know if this is needed or not, but you know, you can look more into it if you'd like. Uh, then this is our counter right here again setting all the bits of our counter to zero and this is the thing that will um, ultimately just sh show what's on the leds what's what's the contents of this and then we're going to have our uh, debounce counter so this is the thing that counts um, the how long we've held down the button for to make sure it's not just bouncing you'll see that's unsigned um, it's an unsigned byte and the reason why it's unsigned is because originally i was counting up to 255 and um because bytes are signed by default, it never got to 255 because a signed byte goes from negative 127 to 127. So uh, yeah, 255 never got reached. So um, be sure to be aware of that. Uh, this is system Verilog, by the way, uh, the language that I'm writing in. Um, this last thing here uh, up here is our debounce, debounce counter enable. And this is just uh, what we will turn on after uh, we get through these registers and see 
that uh, that they're still on, and so all the bits are set to, to true there as well. Sorry, to zero. All the all the bits are set to zero there for the debounce counter. The next section is this always section right here, and in this section uh, we are going to uh, run on the positive edge of the system clock. We're going to execute this, and this is these are going to execute sequentially because these have um, non-blocking operations in them. That's a non-blocking assignment. And so that means that these should execute sequentially and um, and you know the type of block you use is an always block. If you want to if you want to do things um, what we would call combinationally where everything happens at the same time, you would do an always um like that and you would assign without that uh, without without this symbol right here, you take that out and that would happen um, sequentially. And so we're not going to talk about combinational blocks right now, but uh, we're just going to talk about these uh, sequential ones. So anyways, um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, reset the button down to zero, set all of this to zero for this button down. Um, that's because at the end, if one got detected, uh, it would go high and we need, we need to turn it off so that it just pulses. Um, the next thing we're going to do is actually synchronize uh, that, that button signal. And so that's what's happening right here. We're going to say, hey, the button synchronization registers, make that equal. What it did equal shifted to the left by one and then or that with the button. And so what this will do is uh, shift all this to the left by one and then add the value of the button to the tail end of this synchronization thing. And that's how we're going to clock in and get rid of that metastability problem. The next thing we're going to do is um, detect an edge for our um, for our debounce counter. And what this is doing is it's saying, okay, since I have kind of like the previous state of the of the button, let me see where a, a, a zero to one transition happens. So that's a positive edge of the clock or not of the clock, but a positive edge of the of the button. So we know that a button has just been pressed. And so I'm going to enable the counter on that event. Otherwise, um, if the middle value is zero of those registers, then I know that the button is no longer being pressed or it's bouncing. It's one of the two. So turn off the counter, right? And with that, we're going to say if the enable is um, is on, then we're going to increment the debounce counter by one. And um, and then once that debounce counter gets to 255, I uh, remember the unsigned thing up there. So this works now. Uh, once the debounce counter gets to 255, then we know that our uh, our debouncing has is done, and this button has actually been pressed long enough to be considered, um, you know, not not just chattering, not just bouncing. So um, so we're going to have the debounce debounce counter enable go to zero. We're going to have the debounce counter go to zero, and we're going to set the button down to one. And remember, button down to one, um, this thing gets reset at the beginning of every one of these things at, 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 uh, on the clocks. So, so that will just pulse one for one clock cycle, the button down. And so what we're going to do is we're going to monitor for a positive edge of the button down, and we are going to then just increment our counter by one. And then we're going to have another always block here that all it does is just take the values of the counter and put them on the LEDs and so that we actually have a visual representation of what that counter's uh, value is set to. The next thing we're going to talk about is the test bench. So um, once we've written a module, we're going to want to test it to make sure it works well. And uh, the first thing we need to do is the, uh, the inputs from our module. We need to uh, create the values that we need to, to push into it. So we have these two inputs, the sys clock and the button, and this one output, the LED. So we have two uh, logic items here, which was the what I'm calling the simulation clock and the button, and then an output of a wire this, uh, that will be our LEDs, that will be the output of our uh, module. And so I've uh, instantiated the top, you can see it's named top right here. So top, and I'm calling it UUT top for unit under test top. And then this is saying the system clock of the top module um, or the sys clock of the top module, this this value right here, this one, pass in our simulation clock, its button, pass in our button, its LED, pass in our LED. Uh, one thing about system barrel log is you any any one of these ones where the names are matching, you can just actually do this and it will it will map all of the matching names together. So that could be a shortcut um, if it's easier for you to do things that way. Uh, but anyways, uh, now that we have our top level module instantiated, we need to start generating a clock that uh, from that simulation clock we passed in. And the first thing we're going to do is set all of our sim clock values uh, bits to zero, that quote zero thing does. And then we have this forever um, thing here that's saying, hey, take the simulation clock, delay it by 10 time values. And in this case, our time scale is one nanosecond. So delay it for 10 nanoseconds and then 
flip the sim clocks bit, right? So that's going to just create a clock for us. And then we're going to um, start our actual simulation section, which is where we're doing our debounce thing. This is just printing the time scale of our, um, of our uh, uh, test bench. And then this one's going to actually do the, the debouncing. So it's going to set the button equal to zero for three nanoseconds, then high for seven, and then low for seven, then high for 15. So it's just going to simulate a bounce, and it's making it go high for 6,000 nanoseconds. And then um, once that's done, it's going to check the UUT top uh, object that we created up here. That's going to check its LEDs and LED zero to see if it equals one, which it should. At the end of this deal, that means pass. And if it doesn't, it's going to say fail and it's going to stop the uh, simulation. Otherwise, we'll finish and then we'll stop uh, normally. So the next thing we're going to view is our simulation. So let's go ahead and click run simulation right here. Let's run a behavior simulation. And it's going to, I've already had one running, so it's going to relaunch it. And um, let's let that run. I don't want to save that. Okay, now our simulations ran up to a million picoseconds. We can click this button right here to let it actually run through till the end. And you'll see that we got our pass. Um, so our, our, our system is passed. That's good. Let's go back to our simulation and zoom out to view the entire system. And you can see that this is, uh, this is what we have going on here, which is where here at the very beginning, let's zoom in here and then actually go to the, uh, the first time step actually want to view more signals. So I'm going to go to that UUT top. I'm going to take all of the signals. Um, actually, not all of them, just the ones we don't have. Put them on here and then rerun the simulation. And again, let it run to the end by clicking that button. We got a pass. That's good. Let's uh, zoom out here. To see the entire thing over here. And, uh, and zoom in so we can actually, actually see what's going on here. So, okay. So the first thing I want to look at is um, the uh, the button. So the button is what we have simulated debounce with. So you can see or a bounce with. So here's here it is bouncing around, right? And this is our debounce section of the code. So first, that is in hex. I'm going to change that radix to um, unsigned decimal. Just be a little easier to read that. So what we're going to do is in our synchronization registers. The, uh, the first piece gets synchronized in here, you'll see. And um, then the next bit keeps going in until it gets to the third register. And this is the one that actually gets read. And you'll see that we have it reading high on this on this count. And so that should enable our um, debounce counter, which it does, right? And so our count actually increments by one. Then it goes low again because it was bouncing as it, as it shifts its way through this, this register here. And so our second count is a little bit longer than the rest of them because that was during a bounce period. And then it, you can see it continues on to just hold it like normal until we get to um, the end over here. And so let's go to uh, let's go to the end of this section here and zoom in until we count up to where we get to 255. And then when that happens, when that happens, when we get to 255, that's when the uh, our our internal count, which is just just what's going to be represented by our LEDs goes to one. And then the next, uh, on the next clock cycle, the LED goes to one. And so that would output a one to our LEDs. So the last thing we're gonna look at is uh, the built-in logic analyzer, which I think is, is a pretty neat uh, feature to get to, to view the signals on, on target. So um, what we would do is we would run through the synthesis, which I'm gonna just fast forward here as we do this stuff. So the synthesis is done. And so now that that's done, we can come over here and say set up debug. And then we'll come through here and I actually already have had a debug set up. So I'm just gonna say continue doing it. Um, that's just, it's already populating these in here for me. But if you haven't, then um, you can click this find nets to add. This is a filtering thing you can do, I guess if you have a lot of nets, but I don't. So I'm just saying search for them all. And you click on the ones you want and say, okay, and it'll, it'll add them in here. And this will add it to the logic analyzer uh, section for you. And what that's actually doing and why I kept getting those, do you want to save uh, my constraints files? Because it adds this stuff to the end of your constraints file. And so um, once we have that done, I think you need to run synthesis again, though I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, uh, but once you have all that stuff in there, you would then run your implementation, which we'll go ahead and do. And again, I don't want to save that. I don't know if I should save that, but I haven't been and it's been working. Okay, now that the um, 
Now that the implementation is done, we can generate the bitstream. So now that our bitstream is done generating, uh, we can come over here to the uh, program and debug section. And I can see that in my hardware section, I already have my, uh, my, my device connected. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say program device, click here. And in here, you'll see that we have both a bitstream and a debug probes file. If you didn't do the setup debug, you wouldn't have this debug probes file section and that'd be okay. Uh, but we do. And so we're going to, we're going to program it in there and have that logic analyzer available to us. And so now that it's done, I can come over here to, uh, this logic analyzer section and I already have it set up to where I have the debug counter enable as my uh, trigger. But if you don't, you just click add probe and you click the one you want. And then you tell it, um, hey, you know, I want to trigger when it's one or when I go from a zero to one transition or whatever it is. In my case, I want to I want to trigger whenever uh, the debounce enable um, counter goes uh, goes to or the debounce counter enable goes goes high. So with that um, and uh, and all of these over here, which again, you can just click this button, add probes like that if you'd like to add them to this section. Um, I'm going to turn on the auto retrigger and start running the um, the logic analyzer and so now i'm going to press the button on my device and you'll see i have triggered it and this is actual on target um, logic so i think that's that's pretty interesting and you can see that i can zoom in here and see the counter count up go all the way until it um it's at 255 and then the pulse happens right here for the button down and then our um our debounce counter gets reset and our LED buffer, it's a one. And yes, I have one LED lit up here. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, we are, we should be still going because that, that, that window that 50%. So I'm going to try and press the button again to see if it triggers again. And it does. And see, now we have two on our output here and I have um, the second LED lit up because it's in binary and then three. And so now I have the first two LEDs lit up and yeah, there you go. So we're, we're, um, we're, we're, we have a logic analyzer on target. So those are the things I think are pretty uh, good to remember whenever you're starting a uh, project. And if you like things like this, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, visit us at uh, www.thequantizer.com. Thanks. Have a nice day.